Hi class, you're finishing off your second week of summer and we're entering into the module that addresses aging. Aging is a social problem by the way we evaluate it in this country today. So as a social problem, we look at both the biological and the social classification. Sounds again like sex and gender issues. It sounds like race as we start to look at this, and age really distinguishes the difference between people. So we know as teenagers, you aren't allowed to do certain things. There are restrictions on driving. There were restrictions on drinking. There is a determination of when you're old enough to do those things that are considered adult. And yet with aging, when we look at that preconceived notion of what is old. And if I ask this class what is old, it's nice to know that we have a variety of ages in the class. Um, you know, old doesn't seem as old as it is the older you get. <laughs> What's really old? But usually what I'm asking my class, um, especially in intro class, um, I get about 40, 45, 50. So some of the members of this class are already old up there with me. And we see this as part of the issues of understanding what impact age has on individuals and examining those social problems that come into place. So we have to look at the history of aging. We have to look at the numbers and understand why there is such high concern uh, for aging issues today. So let me pop over to the PowerPoints. And again, let me realign so that we get in the right place. Now, we have lots of choices here, right? We can either grow old or not grow old, and that means we die. So we have to look at it as the fact that it will come somewhere and these biological and social classifications come together to dictate how we are treated in life and what social and cultural define expectations about age or what we fear about age um, and our understanding of it and the response for it. Uh, as we look at this, we look at the fact that we can explore aging through a life course perspective, which examines the entire person's life from childhood to adolescence. When I was first taking my gerontology courses, and my master's is in gerontology, which is the study of aging, um, basically I came to the realization, as, as my professor would say, if you were a dirty old man, you were probably a dirty young man. If you were cynical and whiny, you were probably that way when you were old. That personality continues over time. That it is our life course that affects who we are and makes us where we're at. That age occurs within the context of one's social class, education, occupation, gender, and race. And they all affect the experiences of adolescence, when we look at age issues, or old age. So, population, aging is ever-changing in our demographic structures. In fact, in today, you know, in the past, we used to think that if you turn 62, you could retire with early retirement. Today, 65 isn't even full retirement for the population that is currently aging. As those baby boomers are hitting, they're facing 66 and up as they're required uh, time for obtaining Social Security. And our view of what's old often is tied to what those government regulations come into place. Now, how did those government times come into place that said 65 was old? Remember, that's a study that comes out of Germany and is put into place in 1935. Well, has much changed since 1935? Well, significant things in our structure, haven't they? And so as we look at the demographics of our older adult population, they are healthier than they ever were before. They are living longer. And demographics predict the number of older people they will 
that will be there in America over 65. And remember, our population of aging matches those across the world um, in many respects, but there's some that definitely outnumber us, such as in places like Hong Kong and Japan, where their life expectancy is longer than ours. In fact, our life expectancy dropped um, for the last couple of years, actually went down um, from where it was, though it is still high. So Europeans and North Americans will continue to have a very high percentage of elderly in the world. And again, as I pointed out, uh, Japan was right there with them. Uh, and other places within the world face some high numbers. So we see this dramatic increase of aging. Now remember, this is all based on demographics. Part of the reasons that there are so many more older adults is that there are fewer children being born as well. And so that we see that difference coming into place because this is all based on demographics. So why do we study this sociologically? Well, most of us will sit there with some fear of where aging is going to be, that, that older driver on the road, um, that or t the fear of having to take care of someone that's old. Well, the functionalist perspective looks at aging, and they say age helps us to maintain stability in society by particularly setting roles and expectations, and that these roles are reinforced by social institutions, education, economy, and family. So economy puts into place giving, allowing this older population to possibly retire um, with the support of Social Security. Now remember, Social Security was never meant to be entirely to live on. Um, it was only to be part of the income coming in. Um, but each group has their function and their role to play uh, in the process. The young preparing for school, the young adults in employment, building their lives, and the older adult to retire and be support for the family. And so we see this as part of the process. And that basically in this theory, it ties into the aging theory of disengagement, which says that the older adult will disengage from society. Hmm. Lots of things to contend here. Think about taking the sociology of aging, which is offered every other fall, as we start looking at what the future holds here. These perspectives fail to acknowledge the vulnerable and the powerless adults that in their older years, and it also fails to uh, look for the meaning that people have in life. So what does it mean to me? Well, boomerangers, part of our aging issues. Those are younger adults who leave home for college but return after graduation. So significant issues with aging here. Today, the college student has large debt, and we'll get into that in the education chapter, as well as the fact that the jobs that they can get won't pay enough to able to support them in the custom that they want to live or even to live in whatever respect, so they return home. Fewer children being born, more availability. So we see that more college graduates return home than ever before, and it changes them entering that workforce perspective. In conflict theory, we look at aging as the modernization theories of aging suggest that the roles and status of elderly decline with industrialization. That their power, wealth, and prestige are linked to their labor and their relationship. And when they give up their labor, therefore, they don't have the power. In a modern industrial society, though, all, people can work till much older ages. And it's practical for many times for them to keep on working because their expertise is needed in the industry. So that we see that there is a difference here of who has the wealth. In the conflict perspective, modernization lowers the status of older people. That there's this view that young is better. We can see that when we watch television shows. You'd had to watch uh, an hour of television for issues related to uh, gender. 
think about it in the same way of aging, that there's a, dis, a, a lack of respect for older people. In many cases, we focus on the young. We especially want people to look under, and there's this, this view that young is the best way to be. Um, and therefore, we see a change in society as well, uh, that people will try to emanate that younger look, uh, color their hair, more tummy tucks, more chin tucks, more. And we see this both for male and female. Younger workers have more opportunity to obtain education, and older adults oftentimes aren't considered good education candidates as they go forward. I remember when I was working on my PhD, I took a cruise um, with my husband as our spring vacation, as we often did, and a gentleman at my table complained that I was using the government's money unfairly as a 40 year old going back for my PhD, that I was wasting the government's money because I would never work long enough to repay that in the form of taxes. Um, his perspective was that no older person had the ability to do that, to go back for a reason, and they should not be supported, that it was a pure perspective of the power elite uh, being there, that younger workers were better for the future. Um, and that old people, older people, and thinking in my 40s, had little to contribute. The interactionist perspective looks at how the problems are associated with aging and who defines them and how um, our age reveals roles and that are socially defined. And we see this issue of stigma. Now we have to all talk about stigma as well when we talk about crime, but we can easily see that it, aging has a discrediting attitude. When we look at older professors and their evaluations in the classroom, older professors get much lower evaluations than younger professors, uh, that they, they are not respected at the same level in the United States. Differently are the evaluations in Europe. Part of that is all tied to the culture. And so it again becomes a social construct of what old is and what old should be doing. So the issue becomes, especially from the interactionist perspective, ageism, which is the stereotyping or discrimination against older adults, the inability for them to find jobs, um, to move to other places. In the economic downturn of 2008, 9, and 10, we saw more older adults lose their job and younger adults not able to get jobs as they were coming out of college. What was interesting as we saw this process is that the hiring rate of older adults, which were very qualified for the job, just plummeted into the bottom because they were perceived as not being as ready to learn the job or to be there. Um, and so there became a definite disadvantage that not only uh, were there the inability to hire or have a job, but then they were falling into such a condition that they were unable to support themselves, which made them more dependent. And so we have the increased issues of social isolation, dependency, elder abuse, and these really become the social problems. So what are the social problems of aging? Ageism talked about racism and sexism. It's the ageism is a marked distinction between us and them. And older adults are marginalized, oftentimes institutionalized, and may be stripped of their responsibility and dignity and power. They lay prey to many problems that occur both within the family and within society. So we see many things that come into place. And so um, especially in other countries as well, we see that German young adults view aging even more negatively than American young adults do because of the high cost of older adults to their society. Now, older adults are expensive for the American society as well. And we worry about the cost of Social Security and whether Social Security will be there for our future 20 year olds. That's an important part for us to consider what that cost is. 
today in the United States, people are working longer. But then uh, we also have that negative stereotype for who has the job and who has the right for the job. Age and social class. Elderly are more likely to be living in poverty in the United States. Retirement represents a precarious income drop for most older adults. Part of that becomes from the fact that they have not saved for retirement as would be best or they deplete their savings. They've lived longer. The average age of uh, life if once we've reached um, 60 or 65, the likelihood is that you will live into your 80s. How are you going to support yourself and what is the cost of living and how are things going to change? Um, what's going to be supported in the process? So there are, is, is this increased level of poverty. And the fact is that women live longer than men. Women are already at that lower income level and therefore more highly affected by the issues of aging. Age and social class, and so we have this rate of childhood poverty in the United States, the highest among Western industrial countries, and we continue to see that poverty uh, for children continue um, over the lifetime. In 1960, um, and we're looking at the time period of Kennedy and Johnson. By the time Johnson declares a war on poverty, 25% of children are in poverty in the United States and we fight this war. Notice how close we are coming back to the number of children in poverty almost 20% of the United States census. So this again is the difference as we start looking at this age from multiple perspective, the young and the old. Issues of health and health care are common concerns within the process. Um, the aging population faces long-term chronic health conditions. We used to be a population that would die at younger ages, and we would die of acute illness such as a flu coming through um, and wiping out populations. Today, we live with chronic illness, and so older Americans constitute 13% of our population, but 35% of our health care. Listen to the fights as we look at the change as the country moves from the Affordable Care Act to what the government is now trying to put into place. And part of the issue is the high cost that the older adults or older people in general cost the system. Women face different health challenges than men. They're more likely to have uh, long-term chronic illness. They are more likely to be disabled at a younger age. They need more personal care. Men die uh, from their health issues more than women and so that we see that women cost more and there is this proposal that women should pay more because they cost more. There are issues of aging in the workplace. I mentioned the issue of professors but across the board we see that ageism restricts job opportunities for mature workers. They are often not trained in the same way and they have not been given that opportunity though the current population that are in their 60s today do know those computers well um, and are there. There's a response to aging was uh, the introduction of Social Security. We were not the first to do that. Germany began theirs in the 1800s. Um, and it was divide, designed to provide some economic security for the aged and the poor. And it later included the, the disabled and dependent children into the process so that there would be support for them. Other responses have been Medicare. Medicare started in 1965. It replaced aid for the aged, um, which covered health care for those that were poor. 
and comes into effect with two parts, Part A, hospital insurance, and Part B, outpatient coverage. And now we have a third part, Part D, which is prescription coverage. And so we see these coming into place um, to provide support for older adults. Um, seniors have political power. They constitute significant uh, sections of our voting audience, and they are more likely to vote, but they do not necessarily vote alike. And so that there are many changes that come through. So what are the concerns here? So many with the older adult population, isn't it? Will you have to support them? Will there be needs to, will there be someone to meet your needs in aging? You know, um, I worked with the Rosalind Carter Institute when I was down in Georgia at the University of West Georgia and one of the things that they stated was very clear that you would either be a caregiver, need a caregiver, or know a caregiver. For all of us that comes into place as we start looking at the changing population, doesn't it? That the population of disabled that we'll look at later is growing and a large percentage of the population in the United States and the need to care for those um, with not some helps uh, being put into place to care for those older adults. When you're suddenly in your 50s and 60s and caring for your 80 and 90 year old parents, are you able to meet their needs? It is the family who steps in to provide the majority of care, but there are many services to be concerned with. Your movie this week is a little old, only because I can't find one that covers as much as I would want it to cover. Um, it, you have it here. It's called Growing Old, and it really covers looking at different processes as far as health plans, options for seniors, ending aging, assisted living, starting to think about these issues of aging and how they affect society. So the social problems of aging, what are they? As you start to explore them, um, I think that you'll see as you hit your discussion board here, what are the major social problems and what are some of the solutions to improve those issues? Start thinking about how that comes into place. So what do you see? Is it that driver behind the wheel and the safe roads? Is it that that older adult is falls victim to elder abuse? Is it the fact that um, jobs aren't available for them or is it that the older adults staying in the workforce and maybe in your opinion keeping you away from the job that you want because they're not leaving it. Lots to discuss within this chapter. Have a great day.